all over the world and all through my experience in business i have never seen any entrepreneur or any person who has a vision doing something who achieved the feat without hard work and i know this sounds like a cliche but this is even deeper when you look at the dimensions that we take sometimes in trying to make something happen so very much recently i came across watch mojo and i was wondering what's the fuss about them there's so much traffic on their platforms and i'm like okay so who are they and i had to go search and I found this Canadian company um, based in Montreal, in Quebec, in Canada, of course. And they started in 2006. And they distribute internet videos just about the time, the same time, you know, that YouTube started and Google became very, started becoming famous. And I'm like, who are these guys? It was started by three guys and they just wanted to do it almost like what youtube is doing okay and then they started in their first year they didn't even make any financial gain they were at that point where people usually give up but did they give up no of course if they did we won't have them now with over 25 million subscribers on youtube now they had their own platform mojo.com watchmojo.com but of course they soon pivoted to uh, about 2012 when one of their founders decided that let them move to youtube and on youtube they've had such a success and I, I went down and i began to read more about them how they have over 100 employees of course with some part-timers and freelancers and you know i learned so much just getting to know them that first year when they, when they didn't make sales they were doing videos more of um you know videos you can license for brands like mcdonald's coca-cola then they started something very amazing. And I'm sure if you know them, that's what you know them for. They started what I call the top 10. Top 10 everything. So they, they focused on the niche that had a very broad audience. So they can do top 10 of anything. for Top 10 of, uh, of the best or whatever. You know, just top 10 of anything. And that was how they pick. Um, like currently, they post at least four or five videos on YouTube daily. You know, and the thing that shocks people is that none of these videos are low quality so you can't even say oh okay they are just in a hurry to bring out stuff high quality of course you can see their human resource and all that but then that's not even the only thing that shocked me as i went through and, and with my knowledge of youtube now and my excitement around it especially with what ai can also do and a lot of people who are cashing in on this new industry where we see ourselves as people who can use ai to do so much more stuff i began to think that we need to talk about this in relation to you yes you Because now, this is my own top 10, just like the watch mojo. This is my own top 10 business lessons I think you need to take away from watch mojo. Because I'm taking mine, and of course, this is the, the gang, so we need to share. Number one thing I think that they did that was so amazing, I've already mentioned, is they had a niche focus, but with a broad appeal. So how can you have a broad appeal in a niche that is also very narrow? So they chose the top 10 anything that appeals to everybody. So they can do a top 10 of a, a children brand, a top 10 of a, an elderly brand, a top 10 of you know young people's brand, whatever. You see what I mean? So it's good to start with a clear focus and a specific niche like I have tried to do with this channel and like you may be doing. But you have to ensure that your content or your product has a broad appeal and also make sure that you, they all tie together. Right? Watch Mojo has top 10 about virtually any topic under the sun like oh my god why do you think they have millions of followers the second lesson i learned from them is that consistency is key wait these people have been doing videos since 2006 did you hear me 2006 that's 18 years ago and they came on youtube um at least i looked at their oldest video is 17 years ago can you see even though they weren't doing the top 10 then you know they pivoted around 2012 but this is amazing consistently producing quality videos on youtube for that long so it is what has built their brand and trust and the fact that and the reason why they have loyal audience so you can't change your mind you can't do this and change your mind and do another thing and change your mind you can't it can't work right so people are dedicated to following them because they have been there you know it's, it's like a brand promise people are sure that they're going to be there delivering on entertainment and infotainment and pop culture and all of that Number three, you have to adapt and evolve with your business. 
I'm talking AI now. I have even done a video about faceless videos. Yes, you might have this main video, but nothing is wrong with also, you know, incorporating a little bit of AI like you can see on this particular video. You can tell I'm very excited about this, right? <laughs> so you have to be ready to adapt to changing market trends and audience preference. Let me tell you the truth about YouTube. YouTube is not interested in most of the things that we're interested in. YouTube is interested in putting the right video in front of the person looking for it that's all so if the video you're making is not exciting if the videos i'm making for instance is not exciting you <laughs> i'm just wasting my time because youtube will be like girl until you're serious we'll come back to marketing you but then let's go to other people who are giving people what they are looking for right so watch mojo evolve this content over time you see they didn't start with top 10 but they expanded into top 10 list and other formats they even had interviews reviews deep dives they do other things but they keep their content fresh and relevant you know and you know what to expect number four thing that we need to especially for brands like us who are based in africa we have to learn to take advantage of data and analytics there are some people who are even youtubers listening to me my god but that aspect of analytics is like mathematics to you <laughs> i know i know i know and even when we look at it we don't really use it to act we look at it like okay let me see what i have you know who are where people are watching me let me see how but you're not using that to take an informed decision whether you should make a different kind of video whether you should change the timing of your post you know what i mean so i'm using youtube now as an example but it can be for anything in your industry be ready to adapt to changing market trends and what your audience are looking for what they prefer yeah very very relevant right now when data when you look at data it will help you with your decisions like i have said watch mojo on their own part they you can tell that they were analyzing you know their data their viewer data to determine the topics that they love and all of that which has helped them you know they've optimized their content strategy you can see it you know it's so hard for me to see right so it's one thing to adapt and evolve but it's another thing to use data to take decisions number five you cannot make money by just waiting to be monetized mm, yes if you're doing youtube for instance you cannot focus on just one income stream you must monetize diversely remember i told you that watch model started with even making videos for fast food brands and for beverage brands but today you can tell you can't rely on a single revenue stream and you want to blow how watch mojo monetize it through multiple channels do you know that they have over 35 channels currently 35 channels on youtube <laughs> god share you know the ms mojo that that's like the feminine brand that they have they have the gaming one they have several others so you have to have your revenue coming from ads some coming from sponsorships some are coming from selling merchandise you must diversify your income stream so that you can make your business more resilient so that you can stand the test of time right number six you have to build a strong brand identity i love their name for let me tell you the truth the first time I heard Watch Mojo, you know where my mind went to. I was like, what, 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 Mojo, what, how? <laughs> but, you know, it made me curious to want to go search. That is so strong. And beyond the name, a strong and recognizable brand identity is so important. Watch Mojo's consistent branding across all their content makes them easily identifiable. You can find them anywhere you type Watch Mojo, you're going to find all the that they're about make yours like that as well don't have different names that don't relate number seven engage with your audience i mean we can't say this enough if you don't relate with your with people who are watching you who are buying from you you don't go back to be involved in their life and and all of that like if you're an online business using polls and feedbacks will help it will make your viewers feel valued your customers feel like they're part of you know not just after their money okay or after their views number eight watch model taught me that quality is better than quantity even though yes you need to find a balance around it okay high quality content is very 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 essential but finding a balance with quantity can help you to increase and scale yeah because um i mean it's, it's a no-brainer right finding a balance with your quantity can help you to scale because the can you you know the number of people you need to employ per time and the and the task and the timelines and the you know you can tell what you want to achieve and achieve it because you you can scale with quantity and and quality much more on their part they maintain a balance that is so admirable how do you produce a this large volume of content 
every day, every day for the last 18 years without compromising quality. That's something to tell you that you don't just do something out of the, you know, makeshift and all that. Okay. Number nine. You have to understand how to leverage platforms. Now, they started on their own platform. Oh. They started distributing videos and all that. But when YouTube came, became Baba, you know, you can't come and be competing with Google now. They did not do Superman like, oh, man, we've been here and all that. was that? They just quietly moved to YouTube. And they are making it. Making it and making it. So, you must master the platforms where your audience are. I mean, everybody looking for videos and they come to YouTube. So, why would you want to create a video distribution platform on another platform maybe your own and so i'm buying and paying all those dues and keeping high overhead costs the way you can actually use a free platform and still get the audience really are right it doesn't make any sense to be trying to reinvent the wheel in that sense you know so what would you understood that youtube algorithm and how it works will help them and they leverage it to maximize their reach and engagement so understanding the ins and out of your platform can give you a significant advantage of course finally but not the least you must have long-term vision and you have to be patient guys see i can't tell you the number of times i look at my channel and i'm like oh my god but no i don't think i've ever thought of giving up but because man girl i know where i'm coming from right i know where i'm coming from but i know so many people time, sometimes feel like giving up i've done this for a long time have you done it for 18 years consistently like looking at the watch mojo thing even if you've done it for 20 years as long as you keep reinventing you keep looking at your data you keep using the right platform you keep doing quality you're gonna come around you're gonna come around so today the inspiration is watch mojo the next time may be your business or any other business but i'll keep bringing it hot like it's fresh let me know if you like this format of video and whether i should still do more of course i'm coming with my face very soon as well so let me know what you think let me know which of these things that we learned from watch mojo really struck you and you're going to adapt and yeah i'll come talk to you later make sure you like this video subscribe and of course drop a comment let me know your thoughts on this and i'll come your way again pretty soon cheers